difference is usually interpreted, and by the whole body itself, usually, it's interpreted as something unusual. Anything unusual, in a general degree, is discomfort. However, if you realize that these are changes, that your body is becoming not just crystalline, but also hollow in a sense. There's even little holes in our bones. <coughs> but you slowly begin to realize that your body is adapting. And once your body begins to adapt, the sickness or the discomfort is then converted into a realization. And it is then that your mind does evolve in a real-time process. Essentially, the real-time evolution around us the existence space changing around us, transforming into hy the hybrid existence. Our bodies are not exactly reacting any longer to spiritual changes. Have you noticed that there was a time where you could record, where you could document feelings and, and changes of your body? But now there's such a thickness, there's such a vividness and lucidness that you're not sure if there is anything changing. There's a subtleness, there's a calming occurring. In a sense, a calm before the storm. But the storm, of course, for those who simply don't want to be a part of this existence and want to be in their own, aka government, and those who just don't seem to want to coexist. Now, the hollow points in our bones, that was, that was always because at some point, being is going to evolve. Thus, the, 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 even the body, even the mind, your awareness in a sense does not matter. Your body and mind is going to be prepared for things that you're not going to understand. Which is why, even if you can have a meltdown, even if your persona is so disrupted to the point where you feel like you're fading, you're still there. Your body is not expanding or contracting. You're, you're exi you are still there. Now, for whatever reason that occurs, usually a mental crisis of some source, some sort, or maybe too much information, and you have a relapse of some sort, for whatever reason. Physically and metaphysically and spiritually, we are always connected and always those origins are acknowledged and true at all times, forevermore, before more, and e e eternally. Thus, Though you, as of now, for most who are probably listening to this, realize they still have a potential to realize. They still have a higher self to realize. Now, if you are your higher self, it does essentially go higher. But that is where the ultimate self presents itself. And glimpses can be possibly as dramatic as n not a bad experience, but the overwhelming, the intake of processing information using your current awareness system, it does feel like an override. It does feel like too much. And you feel like you have to pace yourself. So what is the, essentially the building blocks, the processes of thinking in light year speed terms, thinking in eternal terms, because they, if they are not being expressed, there is going to be a generalization of discomfort with these types of magnitudes of changes. But essentially, as I said before, technically your awareness does not matter because evolution occurs anyway. Your body is going to evolve anyway. Your body is even going to realize anyway. Your mind, it, the same thing. The mind and body are not that much different. In fact, your second mind, you could say, is your heart. Your heart works just as the mind per se. It is always flowing, it is always beating, it is always moving, and it is always keeping you at a non-stop pace of living. Now, yes, okay, the mind and heart, only one can think. However, these vessels, these organs of vitality, all cre have a signature of origin as well. So if you think about it, if your mind become, if your mind can become celestial, your heart be can become celestial. If your mind can be self-aware and self-evolve, your heart can be self-aware and self-evolve. It is possible. 
the body then realizes, as the mind does, that it can become eternal. That it's no longer a choice, but it is. Just as breath is not a choice, it is. Blinking is the same thing. Of course, blinking is um, not as vital as breathing, but uh, it's, still, it's still effortless. It still occurs without any thought. So there's a natural way that we live. There's a natural way our physicality and how we consistent, con constantly live. In the constant, there is a realization of freedom when you realize that your mind and body are connected. They can be, both become aware and at some point, you could possibly realize that Tai Chi could be forms of messages. In fact, not too long ago, I've re-realized this at times, but the re-realization is always shimmering, glowing more and more. That I can do certain symbolic messages with my fingers and hands, and they can mean extreme amounts of information, as it is we can draw with our hands to either convey messages or words. These are the hands are the actual extensions of the mind itself in practical terms. The eyes are, more, are the more literal extensions of the mind. Now I mention this because at some point verbalizing information isn't going to be the entirety. Instead, your movements, your style of personality will be reflected in your movements itself. This is why the, the, the body becomes lighter because essentially you are becoming more synced with your higher dimensions of expressing information. So the hollow points in our bones were already there because evolution is to occur anyway and these forms are very versatile and very diverse. This is why the body, it, uh, the human body in particular, which has 22 species of ET races in its origins, in its codes, we are already hybrids. We, our bodies are we're already prepared for another existence, at least the potential. If the potential exists, the preparations were already configured and considered. It's all in real time. So the hollow points in our bones very well at some point could carry energy, very vast amounts. And at some point, our bone mass could become as that energy and we would have basically dense energy, but it would be 